Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge Career Mode. My name is Mephisto and today we're heading off to Brazil for round 3 of the 2001 Formula 1 season. Before we begin, I'd like to make a special announcement of sorts. This video, the one that you are watching right now, is my 50th video. Imagine that, 50 videos. That is quite a lot. <laughs> And that's saying something. Not exactly sure what, but it says something. So, um, hooray for 50 videos, I guess. Yeah, let's get started. Located within the southern suburbs of Sao Paulo, the bumpy Interlagos circuit consists of two very distinct sections. The first outer section combines two very long straights with fast sweeping turns whilst the technical infield contains some very slow corners that demand absolute precision and leave no room for driver error. We jumped straight into qualifying and it was raining, just my luck. That time was a 127.006 seconds, around 10 seconds lower than what I could pull off in the dry. Then, on my second attempt, the rain picked up significantly and I also made a few small mistakes throughout the lap, but amazingly this lap time was a 126.421 seconds, about 5 tenths faster. But then on my third try, just as I started my flying lap, I broke very late into turn 1 and I ended up going off the track, losing me a lot of time. Then I went out for one last time and it was now or never. Bon Jovi reference there. This lap time was a 125.558 seconds, nearly one second faster than what I've previously done. See you on the grid. Hello there. Welcome to Brazil for round three of the 2001 FIA Formula One World Championship. The weather, as so often is the case here, is just wonderful. David Coulthard, first. Hakkinen, second. Schumacher, third. Barrichello, fourth. Juan Pablo Montoya, fifth. Button, sixth. Eddie Irvine consistently outpaced his championship rival, the BAR driver. Frensen, eighth. Jos Verstappen, ninth. Panis was consistently faster than his teammate. He starts 10th. Kimi Raikkonen, 11th. Trulli, 12th. Heidfeld, 13th. Berti, 14th. Schumacher, 15th. Fernando Alonso, 16th. Giancarlo Fisichella, 17th. Pedro de la Rosa, 18th. Jean Alesi, 19th. Bernaldi, 20th. The BAR driver, 21st. Tarso Marquez, 22nd. Here we are on the grid. The weather has finally cleared, and let's hope it stays that way. And I'm starting from 17th, a pretty familiar place for me. And we're off. And almost immediately there's an accident on the track. Cars were slowing down and I slightly hit one of the prusts by mistake. That was quite an intense start, wasn't really expecting that. And look at that, Alonso goes around the outside in his Minardi. That's impressive. Here's the start once more and it looks like Mika Hakkinen installed his car, causing a whole bunch of cars to crash into him. That is one crazy start and it seems that this is going to be it for Hakkinen. This is a view from Alonso's perspective. Wings fly left and right. Complete carnage, and another view from my teammate's point of view. Wow, Rubens Barrichello was launched into the air a bit. What a mess that was. I was now chasing down Sean Alesi, I've actually fallen down to 19. Alesi slowed down there for no reason, so I went past him. Next was De La Rosa and Fernando Alonso, who I was hoping to pass before the end of the lap. At least that would be ideal. De La Rosa brake checked me. 
and as we were approaching the hairpin, I felt that I sat behind De La Rosa long enough. However, he kind of caught me off there, so I was forced to hold back. However, in theory, I should have a faster car than De La Rosa, so I should be able to get him on the fast section of the track. And Sean Lacey got me on the inside, well played. I definitely wasn't expecting that. I should make sure to better defend my position next time. But as we are coming around to finish the first lap, suddenly everyone was slowing down and I got ahead of a bunch of cars there. And I was now driving side by side with Jarno Trulli, but he had a clear track in front of him, as for me I had the Sauber of Nick Heidfeld, so he managed to get away. But I was now challenging Heidfeld for position. Let's see which one is better, a Honda engine or a Petronas engine. It seems that they are quite evenly matched, but I'm sure that I can take him under braking. No, Nick Heidfeld outbroke me. Then, a couple of hundred meters later, Alonso goes on the outside. What has happened? How is that Minardi so good? And don't tell me it's because Alonso is driving it. At the end of the day, a Minardi is still a Minardi. And I finally managed to pass Heidfeld. Oh, happy days. So, now I had to catch Alonso and his Minardi. As the race progressed, I was starting to get a little bit concerned because as you can probably see, the sky was getting darker. But I finally managed to get in front of the Minardi of Fernando Alonso. What's it even doing so high up in the field anyway? Don't mean to be rude, but a Minardi's place is at the back of the pack, not midfield. On lap 7, I caught up to Luciano Berti and passed him on the back straight, and was now in 9th. Just 3 more positions and I would be in the points. I had to push. Next up, I had Diano Trulli who was around 5 seconds ahead, so I needed to increase my pace. Towards the end of lap 8, I finally caught up to Trulli and passed him, placing me in 8th. Next was Fisichella. He was around 6 seconds up the road, but I also had to think about pitting. I was hoping that, at the very least, I would be able to either jump him in the pit or pass him afterwards. On lap 13, as I was contemplating on pitting, Luciano Berti managed to blow his engine. Let's have a look. And here is the frost of Luciano Berti. We can clearly see some white smoke coming out of the rear of his car. He comes through the hairpin, white smoke turns into black smoke and he stops his car in the middle of the track. As we see Penis, my teammate, go around him. So that was it for Berti. That's him right there. Unfortunately for me, however, he was one lap down so no free spot this time around. Which is okay, I guess. I'm relying a bit too much on retirements anyway. But I am coming in for a pit stop at the end of lap 13. I was still in 8th, but that was obviously about to change. And I just passed Ralf Schumacher, who was also in the pit. So for a brief moment, I'll be sitting in 7th. And there goes 7th. So let's see how this stop goes. Is it me, or does the guy who's supposed to be holding the front jack is just pretending to be holding it? Uh, who cares? We are off once more after a very slow 12 second stop. Barrichello is now closing in fast. So I came out just behind Barrichello and I thought to myself that I might be able to challenge him for position. However, I instead did what I do best and went off the track. That was a lot of wasted time. I now had to somehow make up for it. One lap later, I was chasing Ralf Schumacher who was passed by Rubens Barrichello at some point. And I made a huge mistake. My tires were still relatively cold, but besides that, I didn't turn in and up for the corner. I went off the track, panicked a bit, slammed on the brakes, locking my wheels, and since locked wheels and gravel don't really go together too well, I ended up in the barrier and broke off my rear wing. So that was annoying. As I was coming around to go into the pits and replace my rear wing, I managed to hit the wall again, amazingly enough, that didn't damage my suspension. Now, as I was waiting for the mechanics to finish replacing my wing, my teammate decided to come in as well, and he slammed into me. I was now ready to rejoin the track, however, Panis was not. He actually retired shortly after. I don't understand why the AI comes into the pit, even when the pit box isn't clear. That shouldn't happen. On lap 22, I was chasing Sean Lacey who was stuck behind a back marker for some reason, and I just blast my way through. That was the easiest overtake I've done in a long, long time. As I was coming around to finish lap 23, Brenton and Heidfeld had an accident. They were both ahead of me, 
so I was relieved that I would probably be able to gain at least 2 places. But here's the replay. Frenson passes Heidfeld, after which Frenson decides to peel off into the pits and makes light contact with the Sauber of Nick Heidfeld. But that meant that I would be getting one spot at least. I eventually make my way up into 12, thanks in part to a few more pit stops from the AI. However, this was as much as I would get in this race. I was now coming around to finish the race, a disappointing 12th place, and I only have to blame myself for that. That's me shaking the car in frustration. I really wasn't happy, I knew I could do better. Instead, I went off the track, panicked, slammed on the brakes, that in turn locked off my wheels, which rendered the car uncontrollable, and I ultimately ended up in the barrier. Oh boy, these first few races really aren't going my way, are they? First, my brakes failed at the end of the Australian Grand Prix. At the Malaysian Grand Prix, a lacy slammed into me at the start of the race and broke my rear wing, and now I made a mistake. Quite a big one at that. And now, I am sat here wondering whether this whole season is going to be like this. I surely hope not. Let's get on with the standings. At the end of an amazing Brazilian Grand Prix, here are the final results. Coulthard, first. Montoya, second. Schumacher, third. Verstappen, fourth. Ralph Schumacher, 5th. Irvine, 6th. The BAR driver, 12th. With the results confirmed, it's high time we updated the driver's championship. Schumacher, 1st. Michael Schumacher still leads the driver's championship with 24 points. Just 4 points behind him is David Coulthard. In 3rd we have Juan Pablo Montoya with 10 points. Ralph Schumacher is 4th with 9 points. 5th is Heidfeld with 4 points, 6th is held by Hakkinen, and Barrichello and Verstappen with 3 points, and Eddie Irvine is in 7th with 2 points. Ferrari stay ahead in the Constructors' Championship, despite having their lead reduced by this result. McLaren are second, followed by the third place Williams. In the Constructors we have Ferrari in 1st with 27 points, just 4 points behind are McLaren with 23 points, Williams are 3rd with 19 points, Sauber are 4th with 4 points, Arrows climb into 5th with 3 points, and Jaguar drop down into 6th with 2 points. Quite a disappointing race again. I really thought we could score some points this race, but it seems that luck was not on our side. I am not going to say better luck next time because I'll probably end up jinxing it, which would be counterproductive. Our next race is the San Marino Grand Prix, which should be a lot of fun. Now before I go, I would like to mention that I have switched jobs, so I work on a slightly different schedule now, but I'm hoping that it won't interfere too much with my upload schedule. I will still try to upload two videos per week. But I had to change jobs because I needed a better income. Anyway, until next time, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, stay sharp.